What is up, YouTube? Case Miss Primer back at you with yet another video. This time I'm doing something that I haven't done in a little while. This is my review on WWE SummerSlam 2017. It's been about an hour since the pay-per-view ended. It's about midnight my time. It was a four or five hour event. Which seems to be the new gold standard for the big four pay-per-views. Like we won't see this again till Survivor Series. But this was definitely a big event. A lot of matches on the card. I didn't see a single one of the pre-show matches, but this this SummerSlam definitely kept me on the edge of my seat. So, let's just run down the list here. Starting with the pre-show. I didn't watch any of the pre-show matches. The Miz and the Miz Taraj defeating the Hardy Boys. Didn't watch that. Neville defeating Akira Tozawa for the Cruiserweight Championship. I saw that coming. The Usos defeating the New Day for the championship. Did not see that coming. So, like I said, I didn't watch the pre-show. But I kind of saw... I really saw the Neville thing coming. I didn't see the other two coming. So, yeah. Let's just get into the main card. John Cena defeating Baron Corbin. This goes back to about last week on SmackDown when Baron Corbin attempted to cash in his Money in the Bank contract on Jinder Mahal. He the he would cash it in and the, the bell rang, but John Cena interfered and allowed Jinder Mahal to pin him and retain the championship and screwing Baron Corbin out of his championship opportunity. So as you can tell, Barry Corbin was got pretty pissed at John Cena for screwing him out of the title. So this led to their match at SummerSlam. And honestly, I really didn't care about this match because I don't like Baron Corbin or John Cena. But John Cena ended up winning, which is too bad because I really would have preferred this match to end in a no contest. So that was the opening match. Natalia defeating Naomi by submission. Well, I really didn't see this one coming. You know, I was actually banking on Carmella to cash in her Money in the Bank contract tonight and walk out as either Naomi to walk out as the women's champion or Carmella to walk out as women's champion after cashing in Money in the Bank. So I really wasn't expecting to see Natalia win. This does end a six-year drought that of Natalia being women's champion, but... Quite frankly, who cares? I mean, she's just trying. She's riding Bret Hart's coattails. I mean, it's just it's time for her to retire already. I mean, people don't like Bret Hart anymore. She's trying to ride his coattails by staying in WWE and constantly pushing for the belt. But I wouldn't be surprised if on SmackDown, Carmella cashes in her contract and beats Natalia for it and ends her title reign in two days. And on unrelated notes, I hope they take all that neon stuff off the belt that Naomi put on there. Because she made the SmackDown Women's Championship look like a toy. If you know what I mean. <sighs> Big Cass defeating Big Show. Now, much like the match between Kevin Owens and... I want to say... Roman Reigns? I think it was Roman Reigns. Enzo was suspended above the ring in a shark cage. However... Enzo found a way to escape. And his distraction was able to give Big Cass the opportunity to knock out Big Show and pin him. Not to mention Big Show was fighting with a injured right hand. So... I really don't know where this whole thing with Enzo and Cass is going to go ever since they split up. I mean, Enzo and Cass have never won a single championship in WWE since they've come up to the main roster. They're really, the fans don't really like them. So I don't know where they're going with this, them splitting up. I really have no clue. Randy Orton defeating Rusev. This was kind of a bell rings, pinfall, match end type thing where Randy Orton was making his entrance. Rusev comes out of nowhere. Bell rings, RKO, pinfall, match is over. 
I mean, it was over that quick. Clearly no effort went into this match. It was just one of those quick 10-second things that no effort was put into. So, I don't know why that match was even made in the first place. I mean, is it because Rusev wanted to be WWE Champion instead of Jinder Mahal? I really don't know. But the, I don't watch SmackDown. That was kind of a throwaway match for me. Sasha Banks defeating Alexa Bliss by submission. Now, that was disappointing. You know, I was really actually hoping that Emma would interfere in the match, causing a disqualification, and then Stephanie McMahon would return and restart the match as a triple threat, and then Emma attacks one of them, pins them, and then she becomes women's champion, because I think it's pretty much safe to say everyone wants Emma to be women's champion as more than Sasha, Bailey, Nia Jax, or Alexa. Or Alicia Fox, or any woman on the Raw or SmackDown women's roster, they want Emma as champion. So, it won't probably won't be long before Charlotte comes back to Raw and steals the championship from Char from Sasha, and it goes back and forth between the two of them again. So, prepare for that for Charlotte to come back to Raw and challenge her for the title at No Mercy and take it from her. Just giving you guys a heads up, because they did this last year. And there's no doubt they'll do it again this year. They're trying to reestablish Charlotte as a heel and not... And bury Emma and Charlotte... Or not Emma, not Charlotte. Yeah, this woman tongue stops working. Bury Sasha Banks, Nia Jax, Bailey, all the good women at the bottom, and push people like Charlotte at the top. Just because Ric Flair got in the, in the hospital. Simple as that. Finn Balor defeating Bray Wyatt. Oh, now that was a good match. A lot of us have been hoping that Finn Balor would have a good match at SummerSlam. Considering what happened last year, um, hint, hint. Universal Championship ringing any bells? He got screwed over last year. I mean, he won his match against Seth Rollins, but had to give up his title the next night due to an injury. So... Ever since he came back, the Raw after WrestleMania, we've been hoping that he would get some kind of retribution. So hopefully now that he's ended this rivalry with Bray Wyatt, maybe now he can focus on getting back into the Universal Championship picture. Because he technically never lost the title. So here's to hoping that now that he's gotten Bray Wyatt out of the way, maybe he can move to SmackDown and pursue the WWE Championship. Or he can go after Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. Or who, you know... Whoever's got it when he challenges for it. I really don't really... I'm kind of sick of Bray Wyatt, you know. I didn't think he would last long when he first first introduced with the rest of the Wyatt family in 2013. I mean, Braun Strowman doesn't even wear the black sheet mask anymore. I have no idea where the hell Luke Harper and Eric Rowan are, so... You know, since Bray Wyatt's on his own, he's kind of... His gimmick's gotten kind of boring. It really only worked... When they were with, when he's with the Wyatt family, now he's on his own. He's kind of stale and boring, and kind of ripping off the Undertaker. To put it simply, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins defeating Cesaro and Sheamus, or as I call it, a Shield reunion minus Roman. Basically, it's been Seth and Dean. Having each other's back when they've been going in singles competition against Cesaro and Sheamus in tag team matches or singles competition. And neither of them really wanted to get back together because Seth thinks he's still the, the king, the architect, the champion. And Dean just doesn't trust him from what he did back in June of 2014. I still remember that Monday Night Raw when... Seth Rollins attacked Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose with a steel chair and joined the Authority, and the Shield died. I still remember that night, as if it was yesterday. And I still haven't really moved on. Tonight was supposedly a Shield reunion, because Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose joined together in a tag team match against Cesaro and Sheamus for the Raw Tag Team Championships. And they won. So... Could we possibly be seeing a return of the Shield? I don't know. I mean, is it going to work considering what Roman Reigns has gotten himself into? Probably not. 
because Roman Reigns has become somewhat of a pussy, and Seth and Dean are pretty much the only two members of the Shield who are actually credible as being liked by the WWE Universe. So, if they do want to reunite the Shield, they're going to have to do something to make us like Roman Reigns again, because after what happened at WrestleMania, we all hate him. AJ Styles defeating Kevin Owens with Shane McMahon as special guest referee. What the hell is this on my watch? Oh, that. First of all, what the hell is up with that baseball jersey Shane McMahon was wearing? It was literally a black and white striped version of his baseball jersey that he wore at WrestleMania 33, except the the word Shane O'Mac was in white, and it had black and white stripes running down the middle, and it you know, just it looked like his old baseball jersey, and it had the SummerSlam logo on the back instead of the number thirty-three. So this was kind of a pushing match because Kevin Owens was trying to get into Shane McMahon's head, reminding him that he had a match with AJ Styles at WrestleMania and lost. I mean, currently Shane McMahon is zero and two in in WrestleMania right now, so I didn't think he'd be that eager to get back in the ring, especially at SummerSlam. And considering he was also eliminated in Survivor Series. But basically it was all about AJ Styles and Kevin Owens messing with each other. Trying to mess with the referee. Tipping him in their favor. But in the end, ultimately, AJ Styles was able to pull out the victory. And retain the championship. Which is a good thing. Because I don't like Kevin Owens as United States Champion. I think he was better off as Intercontinental Champion. But I don't think I see him as well as a United States Champion. Okay, now this one disappointed me. I was really disappointed with this match. Jinder Mahal defeating Shinsuke Nakamura. Let me ask you a question. In all of your years of watching wrestling, have you ever gone to a show and see your fav one of your favorite competitors have one of the most badass and epic entrances of all time, only for them to get their asses handed to them? That's pretty much what this was. This was building up the perfect hype for Nakamura to become champion. I mean, really, they they had this. They pretty much had was going to hand this to him on a silver platter. But ultimately, Jinder Mahal gave him the big fuck you, and the Spielberg brothers got involved, causing a distraction, which allowed Jinder Mahal to pin him and retain the championship. That was a golden opportunity wasted. I mean, you have one of your hot shot stars from NXT finally making one of his main pay-per-view debuts. I mean, he's been losing since he came up to the main roster in pay-per-view events. So, this was the perfect opportunity for him to win. Especially a championship. I mean, he lost at Money in the Bank. He lost at Battleground. This would have been a perfect chance for him to win. But ultimately... WWE doesn't, doesn't agree. They want Jinder Mahal as champion. They want someone who no one even likes anymore to, to be champion instead of the one that everyone likes. It's like it's like Roman Reigns on Raw. You know, we all hate him, but they want us to like him. Same thing's going with Jinder Mahal on SmackDown. They want us to like him, but we don't like him. We, they, we told them who we want as champion, and they won't give it to us. It's like Daniel Bryan all over again with the authority back in 2013 at SummerSlam. If you remember that match. If you don't, watch it on the WWE Network. It was quite the... It sparked what's happened these days. And the main events for the, the Fatal 4-Way match for the Universal Championship. I knew when all four of those men got in the ring, the proverbial shit was going to hit the fan. I mean that literally. You got four big guys in WWE, all in the same ring at the same time. No disqualifications, no countouts. Yeah, there might be some bloodshed. We thought that when Brock Lesnar was going to be taken out, I mean, when he was wheeled out on a stretcher, we thought, okay, we're guaranteed a new champion. The question was, who was it going to be? Was it going to be Roman Reigns? Was it going to be Braun Strowman? Was it going to be Samoa Joe? But, just like Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30, he came back. And he fought his way through it. Just as Roman was about to spear him, he turns it into an F5, pins him, and retains the championship. I mean, I really didn't think that Brock, Brock Lesnar was ready to leave WWE. I mean, 
if they're going to have him lose the championship, it'll probably either be at a big pay-per-view, like Survivor Series in November, the Royal Rumble next January, or in WrestleMania in New Orleans next year, the same building where he ended the streak of The Undertaker. Which, by the way, what the hell was all that talk about The Undertaker supposedly coming back tonight? We all saw him retire at WrestleMania. So, what's all this about him coming back? Is it just to get back at Roman? I mean, Roman can say it's his yard all he wants, but at the end of the day, it's the, still the dead man's yard. I was glad that Brock Lesnar retained because Brock Lesnar actually keeps Raw interesting with the Universal Championship, makes it significant. If Roman gets his hands on it, then it's just going to be boring. The only ones who could have made, only other person who could have made that match more interesting if, by winning was Samoa Joe. I mean, Braun Strowman's not that successful with the fans. He's just a big guy who loves to do beats up Roman Reigns. He's nothing fancy. Samoa Joe has actually, you know, built a character. He would actually make a good Universal Champion. So, he was my second pick to win it, if not Brock Lesnar. But, ultimately, Brock retained. So, we probably won't see Brock again until Survivor Series in November. So, probably between No Mercy, Clash of Champions, and Hell in a Cell is probably when we will see number one contenderships put up for grabs. Unless they want Brock to compete at one of those events, which I highly doubt, because usually they only have Brock compete at the big four pay-per-views over the last few years. But they could make an exception, I don't know. But it sounds very unlikely that we won't see him again in action until Survivor Series. So, what would I, what would I rate Sur SummerSlam this year? Um, oh boy. It had its ups, it had its downs. Was really kind of hoping for Bobby Roode to make his main roster debut tonight. Or maybe for Emma to or maybe to have, have a five-woman ladder match for Carmella's Money in the Bank contract and James Ellsworth turns heel on her, costing her the briefcase, and maybe Emma wins it and then cashes it in on Natalia or Alexa Bliss or whoever walked out as champion. So, it had its good matches, but it also had its bad ones. So... Take it as you will. You know, that's just how I feel. I'm kind of half split 50-50 about it. But I guess that's about it. Later, guys. I am out of here.